Megan Avery from Hipstitch Academy and today I'm gonna show you how to make espadrilles. I made these espadrilles, I got them from a kit from Etsy. I'm gonna talk about everything that comes with the kit, literally everything you need to make finished shoes. Um, and I'm gonna take you through the process. I made some uh, slight adjustments to things to make it a bit easier and talked about that as well. So this is gonna be a good video. In case you don't know me, I am Megan. I have a website and sewing school called Hipstitch Academy. I also love helping other people who teach sewing with marketing and business tips to get their businesses off the ground. I teach sewing on Zoom, so you can take classes from wherever you are. They're live classes where we all get together and sew a certain project. I also do a free YouTube live stream sewing lesson every single week. That's on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. We make sewing projects from free sewing patterns that I find online. So it's a free lesson, it's a free pattern, you just have to come up with the fabric. Let's get started on these espadrilles. All right, so here is my kit. It comes with this great instruction book. Um, has the step-by-step -step instructions for how to actually make the espadrilles. You also obviously get the pattern, um, what you're going to cut out from the fabric. You've got the toe and then the back piece. Mine is a size 42. It's European sizes. I chose the kit that had this Le Fleur fabric from Rifle um, Paper Company. Comes with that fabric, comes with a matching lining and some medium weight interfacing. So you're gonna use all three of these fabrics. It's the the Le Fleur fabric is so gorgeous. It's like a canvas weight. Here are the espadrille soles and they have a rubber bottom, but the top is kind of like a rope. Um, so it's easy to sew through, semi easy to sew through. And then you get all of these notions. So here is, the needle pullers, you've got pins, comes with a pack of pins, comes with a tool to poke out the corners, which is really handy. I will keep that forever. This is the thread that they give you to sew the tops to the um, soles of the espadrilles. It's pretty thick. Um, cotton fabric or cotton thread and what else we have in this little bag a few different needles and I'll be honest I actually <laughs> lost my needles when I went to sew mine together so I use my own I'll talk about that um, as I go uh, okay so here I am I'm cutting out the size 42 pattern I'm just following the line for size 42 all the way around and getting rid of all my little scraps so you need two of each of these pattern pieces in the outside printed fabric and I'm cutting it out And the same goes for the lining fabric. So you see how I just kind of, I, I have, you know, I'm always going to save the most fabric that I possibly can. So I just flip that top piece just to make it all fit. And I've got some extra that I can do whatever I want with, but it's obviously, um, the fabric is doubled. So I'm getting two of each of these pieces. So they give you quite a bit of fabric. Uh, not sure if it's enough if you completely messed up to do another set, but it's quite a bit of extra, which is nice. Uh, and then same goes for the interfacing, only the interfacing you're actually going to do four. So I'm trying to figure out how can I fold it 
There we go. And get four layers for each of the pattern pieces. And since it's interfacing, it's not a woven interfacing, so you can um, tilt the pattern piece so that it fits on there, just like I did. So it's four interfacing pieces for each of the patterns. Okay, so now we have to iron the interfacing onto the fab group pieces. So I'm just gonna start by pressing each of the pieces and then I'm gonna lay each of the interfacing pieces onto the wrong side of the fabric so that the glue side is down. Now you know what side the glue side is because it feels kind of rough, it looks shiny. You lay that onto the wrong side and then kind of run the iron over it that's going to heat up the glue and make the interfacing stick to each piece of the inner uh, each piece of the fabric so that's what I'm kind of doing with the interfacing you can kind of like leave the iron on there and let it sort of stick for a couple seconds at a time I, I don't really like do any vigorous ironing I kind of just slowly make sure I press it looks kind of fast right now because I've sped up the video but um, yeah you can just kind of run the iron over it and it'll stick to it So once the interfacing is all ironed on, I'm going to take one of the flower printed fabrics and one of the linings and pin them together right sides facing. And then I'm gonna leave, per the instructions, I'm gonna leave like a little two inch hole on the larger curved side, making sure that that's a, an inch, about an inch from the corner. Um, it says right on the instructions very clearly, but um, I kind of used my pins to mark where I wanted to leave that open. Then I'm gonna take the heel pieces and same thing, one flower matches up with one lining, right sides together. And then of course you have to leave your opening um, on this piece as well. And the thing of it is, is you're not leaving an opening on a corner. You definitely wanna make sure that, you know, it doesn't really matter where the opening is as long as it's not on the sides because they're too short and you want it to be not too close to a corner. So you can kind of see where those pins are in the left corner down there. And I'm adjusting that because I think I decided I wanted it to be a little bit bigger. All right. So because these are shoes, we really like I'm not such a stickler about seam allowance a lot of the time, but because I want these to fit on the soles perfectly, I want to make sure that we're keeping a half inch seam allowance per the instructions. So I grabbed my ruler and I just made sure that where I'm sewing is a half inch seam allowance. And I'm starting at one of the pins that's marking my opening. I'm going around the entire thing and stopping at the other pin that is marking my opening. So I'm gonna get there and do my little back stitch and then Obviously, I'm going to do the same thing on the other set of the toe piece. And then here I have the heel piece starting at the beginning of the opening, going around all four edges, avoiding my pins, and ending at the second pin that marks my opening and doing a little back stitch. Okay, cool. So then obviously you do the same thing with the second one. All right, now I've got all my pieces sewn. I'm just snipping all my threads. It's good to do that, you know, periodically throughout the project so you don't throw, sew them into the project. And now I'm just clipping the curve and that's a really great idea. It's in the instructions. They want you to just cut the corners off and do little snips on the curves um, so that when you turn all of these pieces right side out, the curve, fits uh, sits flat really well and kind of expands so that you have a nice flat and bump free curve.
Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and turn all of the sewn pieces right side out. I am gonna use this handy little poking tool to kind of round out the toe pieces and get into those corners. It's actually a really great tool. I love it. <laughs> I will use it for a long time. And then same goes for these long skinny pieces and for long skinny pieces like this the trick is to start at the closed end and kind of turn that first and then you'll um, have an easier time starting it let me show you that what I mean by that again so when you pick up the long skinny piece the side that's closed you kind of start with tucking it in with your thumbs like that then use the little poking tool and then it's a much easier way to turn it right side out. Okay, next up I am grabbing my little mini ironing board and mini iron and I'm going to iron all my pieces. I've turned in the edges that were open, iron those in, and then I'm just going to stick a couple pins because I'm about to top stitch and the top stitching is what's going to close up those openings. So I just want to make sure everything's nice and flat. The ironing will actually make your sewing a bit easier. So don't skip this step. It kind of reduces the bulk when you flatten out all of those seam allowances. Um, so same thing with all four of the pieces. Okay, so now I'm going to top stitch along the outer curve of the toe pieces. I'm going to do that on both of them. I've got about a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to do a similar thing on these heel pieces. I'm going to top stitch along the edge that has the opening. Again, quarter inch seam allowance. And But I do the whole thing because it, it just looks more intentional that way and I'm doing it on both of them. I decided I would actually top stitch on both sides of these heel pieces and again it just looks a little bit more intentional but that's totally up to you okay so now I'm going to grab my ruler and there needs to be a certain amount of overlap I believe it's 5 8 but just check the um, instructions for this particular project if you are um, doing this with me I don't have the instructions in front of me right now um, but make sure you follow what it says pretty closely because again you need these top pieces to fit onto the soles so don't just you know pick an amount and go with it okay this is gonna be pretty thick so be gentle with your sewing machine. Just go slow. If you need to skip that first part um, where the seam allowances are underneath, go ahead and you can skip that to start. And then you can always flip it and sew off the edge. So I'm going to just continue along top stitching ac across that entire toe piece. And then when I get over here, I'm back stitching where it connects to that back piece and then back stitching at the end. Uh, looks pretty good. Now I'm going to find the middle 
So what we're going to do, so obviously do that for both feet. You're always doing this twice because you're making two espadrilles, but I'm folding that piece in half because I want to find the front center and I want to find the back center. And I'm just going to stick pins in there to mark the front center and the back center. Now I'm going to line up the front center pin with the front center of the sole. And I'm actually going to pin it right into the fabric and into the sole. Um, it'll kind of go into that soft part on top, the rope. It's kind of padded, so it goes right in and then stops when it gets to the rubber. And you guessed it, we're going to take all those pins that they gave us in this kit and start pinning the shoe top all around the espadrille sole. So I've kind of started from the back and I worked my way up part of the front. They're about a half inch apart. And then I started working my way around the other side. You definitely want to start with the back and keep an eye on making sure that this is going to fit. You may have to, you know, do a little bit of gathering to make it all fit, but that's why um, it's important to pin the front and the back so you can distribute any of the extra fabric on top. Mine fit pretty well. I had a couple little um, gathers right around this area, but you know, they fit pretty well. Okay, here goes nothing. I have threaded my needle. I just have one layer of thread on my needle. I have a knot at the end and I'm gonna go up through the fabric. Now, <laughs> this thread is thick. Um, I'm using the thread from the kit at this point and I'm struggling a little bit because it's a lot of layers, especially where the two um, shoe pieces overlap and that's of course what I started with because I wanted to see how hard it would be. So I got it up through the fabric. I grabbed some pliers and I'm using the pliers to kind of help me get the thread. It's through the fabric that I'm having a hard time with. So I'm just kind of using the pliers to get it through the layer of fabric. But now every time I come up, I'm going to grab about a quarter inch of this roped sole, shoe sole, and then up through the fabric. And I'm doing a blanket stitch. So you come up through the sole, through the fabric, pull, and if you forget to loop it through, you can always just um, make the needle go through the loop of thread. And that's the blanket stitch. If you're not sure about the blanket stitch, it's probably not the video to be learning the blanket stitch. I mean, I guess you can kind of see what I'm doing, but you could also just, you know, go find another video to teach you the blanket stitch. I even think I have one on my YouTube channel. Um, but you can see it kind of creates that line and in, in between each of the stitches, which is that espadrille looking stitch. So you can kind of see it there. And you're just going to continue to do that all the way around. I'm, cle I'm keeping those pliers handy because I'm struggling to get it up through the fabric, but I just kind of give it a yank with the pliers. I tried the um, the little thumb things, the, the needle grippers, I guess. It didn't help for me, so I, I just, you know, went for the pliers. That seems to help. I do want to mention that I ended up... Um, after I did this video, what I did is I ended up taking the, the stitching out because I needed to make, the shoes were big on me. So after the video, I took the stitching out and then I decided that I would just use regular embroidery floss, which probably is not as strong, but it was a lot easier to get um, up through the fabric. I didn't have to use the pliers every time. So the, it's a, the embroidery floss is a little bit thinner so I could use a smaller needle and everything went through a lot easier. So if you are working with this kit, that's one 
um, little recommendation. And then you do get this cool espadrille wax that waxes the thread so it doesn't get tangled. I just put some on there because I was getting tangled. But like I said, I ended up going with a different thread, same color. It was just an embroidery floss instead of this heavier duty. And I like the way it turned out. So yeah, so with mine, um, I did it all the way around and then I realized that the seam allowance that I was taking when I was doing this blanket stitch, it wasn't quite enough. Um, the shoes were really loose on me, so that's why I ended up taking it out and decided to go with a different thread, made the seam allowance a bit bigger and then they wound up tighter. All right, I'm gonna stop talking now. You can watch me. Um, so the rest of the way around the espadrille with my pliers, uh, you know, where there's a will, there's a way, but you know, you can always kind of figure out how to make something work. So do what works for you.
Okay, we made it to the end. I am just tucking the needle into the front of the shoe and I'm going to grab it from the inside. I tied a, um, a knot on the outside actually just because it was the easiest thing to do. You can't see it. I did a little knot and you can't really tell. And then I put the needle in, I grabbed my pliers and I grabbed it and I'm going to snip my thread as close to the front of the shoe as I can. And there we have one of our finished espadrilles.